coverage of the 2018 Commonwealth Games. Brought to you by Manx Radio and Manx Telecom. And good morning to you in the Isle of Man where it's just gone seven minutes past eight in the morning. It's seven minutes past five here on Australia. Commonwealth Games is entering its third day of action and we're here at the Coomera Indoor Sports Centre this evening where the artistic gymnastic women's individual all-around final is currently taking place featuring the island's sole medal hopeful in the gymnastics Nicole Burns. Now you may perhaps be able to hear behind me some of the crowd noise and the tannoy and the music. It's a fantastic atmosphere here at the Coomera Indoor Sports Centre and we'll bring you updates as we get them as Nicole Burns aims to get a medal for the Isle of Man which would be the Isle of Man's first medal. Uh, last night, Charlotte Atkinson was hoping to have uh, that honour on her. She was competing in the women's 100 metre butterfly final and she qualified with an Ireland record of 58.04 seconds. She didn't even know it was an Ireland record when she came out the pool, but that booked her a place in the final for the 100 metres butterfly. Uh, going into that final, there were three people who had qualified with a quicker time than her. Uh, they were Emma McKeon of Australia, Madeline Groves also of Australia and Canada's Rebecca Smith. So how did Charlotte Atkinson do? Unfortunately she wasn't able to be the island's first medal winner of the 2018 Commonwealth Games but she did break the island record for the 100 meters butterfly for the second time in as many days. She swam an incredible 57.88 seconds. It placed her fifth. It wasn't enough for her to receive a medal but I spoke to her as she got out the pool. Bittersweet, a new Manx record set yeah. by yourself once again, but unfortunately missed out on a medal. Yeah, I mean, that's the first time I've ever been in 57, so, I mean, 100's not even my main event, I mean, the 200's my main event, so, I mean, I wasn't coming here expecting to medal, I mean, so I was pleased to make the final, so to come out with a PB is just looking good for the rest of the week. And three tenths of a second off third place, it's fine margins at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, it's so close at the top of the field and but to be fair there's Olympic champions in there so to come fifth behind those kind of girls, behind the three Australians and Penny, I mean I'm really happy with my place so And you've improved in each race that you've competed in, so was that always part of the strategy? Yeah, I mean I think that's the plan just to take each round as it comes, not to invest too much into the heats into the semis and save it all for the final really so how much of a part did the conditions play tonight, or did it not really matter? But it was raining quite heavily yeah. before you came out. Um, I mean, it didn't really affect me. I mean, I'm used to the rain, obviously, but I was just think everyone's in the same boat, so you just have to control what you control, and everyone's yeah, everyone's in the same boat, so it was fine. An Australian one, two, three. Was it always going to be hard coming up against the, the home nations and, and, and the favourites for them? Um, I don't know really. I mean. Obviously it must be amazing for them in front of the home crowd, but I don't think it gives them an advantage. It's still a 50 metre pool, do you know what I mean? I think everyone had the same chance, so, yeah. Uh, your immediate feelings coming off out of the pool after a Commonwealth Games final? Yeah, I mean, I'm so happy to have PB'd. Last, com last Commonwealth I went a 60 point, so to go with 57 here, three seconds faster than four years ago, so it's looking good for the 50 and the 200. Exactly, you've still got more events to come. You must be positive heading into those because as we said before, you've improved in every race that you've took part in so far. Yeah, I mean, it's a really positive start to the week, to the competition, so I'm just excited that I know I'm in a good place for the rest of the week, so just got to keep my head screwed on and I'll be fine. Well, commiserations on missing out on the medal, but congratulations on the Manx record and your new PB and Thank all the best. Thank you. In every event that she's taken part in so far. I apologise for butchering the English language there, but that was Charlotte Atkinson who placed fifth with a new island record in the women's 100 metre butterfly final with a time of 57.88 seconds. And I can say she came out the pool absolutely beaming. She was delighted, she wasn't downhearted, uh, which bodes well for the forthcoming events. And let's hope she can indeed get that medal, which she is so craving to add to her already long list of honours. Uh, just a quick update from the gymnastics. I can tell you after rotation one, Nicole Burns is in 12th place with a score of 10.9. That's after the uneven bars which she excelled in yesterday uh, to book her place in this final. So she's currently in 12th place uh, but she's going well and she's just been on the camera here at the Coomera Indoor Sports Centre and she is also smiling. 
as was, as it happens, back to the swimming last night, Guy Davis in the men's 100 metre breaststroke final. Uh, he came fifth in that one, and again I spoke to him after he got out of the pool. So seventh place in the semi-final of the 100 metres breaststroke. Your journey ends here, but you've set a new Manx record in the process. You've got to be pleased with that. Yeah, definitely. My time in the semi-final was a little bit slower than this morning, but I'm really happy with that. I'm more than made up to make the semi-final, so to come seventh as well, I, I'm just, I'm over the moon. <laughs> if we go back to four years ago when you made your debut in Glasgow, did you ever think you would make the semi-finals? I think, I always said to myself, if I made a second games, I would want to progress to the semi-final since I didn't do that in any of my events in Glasgow. So, I've come here, I achieved what I aim to do, so one more event to go. <laughs> Well, you've come off here with a smile on your face, which is a good sign to see. Uh, you say you've got another event to go. You must be confident in that one. Yeah, definitely. I've got a day off tomorrow, then 50 breaststroke on uh, Sunday morning. So rest up tomorrow and then ready to go again. Uh, and in terms of, of the mood of you and your fellow swimmers, it's been a mixed bag. Charlotte's still to come, um, but it's been positive so far. Would you count it as a successful Games to date? Yeah, definitely. I think the fact everyone's really relaxed is a massive help and we're all just doing our best and that's, we're just doing what we can. <laughs> well that was Guy Davis in the men's 100 metre breaststroke final yesterday. I spoke to him, he competed before Charlotte Atkinson but she placed fifth. Both of them securing new island records in the process and as you heard from those interviews there, both came out the pool smiling which is fantastic and I can tell you that all of the swimming team was smiling. There's a fantastic spirit amongst the swimming team, the swimming contingent of Team Isle of Man which is great to see and there's more swimming to come this evening and we'll bring you more information on that later on in the programme. Also smiling I'm sure is Jo Pack who I think is currently sunning herself uh, on the Gold Coast beach. Let's head to Jo. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I am on the beach side, but unfortunately, I was hoping that I was be able to get some waves in the background. But unfortunately, the connection isn't strong enough, so I've moved inside the media centre. Um, well, today we've been talking to the organisers of Festival 2018, which is all about the entertainment going on through the 10 days of the Games, and that includes music, art, and culture. Um, because we want to give a bit of colour. What is the Gold Coast like? What's happening around here? So we've got some video content to put on the page later. But I did bump into a wonderful. New Zealander who has connections with the Isle of Man and this is what he had to say. My name's Richard Quinney. And Quinney, that rings a bell, it sounds rather familiar, why would I be saying that? Because my ancestors come from the Isle of Man. And you are from? New Zealand. And what brings you to the Gold Coast? My wife and I are both retired now, we have a daughter living here and we've shifted over here to retire. So it's not necessarily just to come and watch the Commonwealth Games that you do live here? No, not necessarily, um, although we are going to some of the events. Um, we're old enough to go through the 1974 Games in Christchurch. Uh, we actually got married about three weeks after the, the Christchurch Games. So, and we've been involved in athletics all our life, well most of our life with our two daughters who used to do um, athletics back in Christchurch. And we were on the centre committee and we used to help run the the weekend meetings and everything like that. So you really do have an understanding of sport, but let's just go back to your connection with the Isle of Man. Let's just talk a little bit more about that. How far are we going back? Um, from what I can understand from my dear late father and the family tree, I'm not sure whether my grandparents or great, parent, great, great grandparents came out from the Isle of Man. And my dad had a photo of a family bakery which they had on the island. It was taken, it looked like a little shed actually, but um, yes, they used to have a family bakery on the island. Who are you going to be supporting out here at the Games then? Um, mostly the Kiwis, uh, although you know, now that we're in Australia we support some of these Australian um, sports. But You're not saying the right thing here, you do know that don't you? Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm keeping an eye on the island man as well, <laughs> don't worry. Um, I've only seen it on TV so far but we're going to the swimming tomorrow and athletics next week and I'm also going to the final of the bowls. Being a New Zealander I feel like I can ask this question but do you follow cricket? I do, yes. What did you make of obviously all the news and uh, what's happened within the Aussie cricket world of late? Absolutely disgusting I'm afraid. Hmm, well after our chat he mentioned something else. Just tell me the story about the acorn. 
Well, my dad told me the story that um, my grandparents immigrated from the Isle of Man and my grandmother smuggled an acorn into the country in the pocket of her coat and they uh, went on to a family farm north of Christchurch and she planted the acorn and it is still there today. That's an incredible story, wow. Chris, where have you been today? I've been at the Broad Beach Lawn Bowling Club today. In fact, it's the second time I've been there. I went on the opening day of sporting action at the 2018 Commonwealth Games simply because the Isle of Man has a team featuring father and son pairing Clive and Mark McGreal. Uh, they've been in section B of the men's pairs. Alongside them in their group have been Wales, Jamaica, Northern Ireland and South Africa. And that's been the order in which they have played those nations. They opened and then with a, a match against Wales in which they lost by 22 points to 11. However, they followed that up with a victory of their own, winning 21-10 against Jamaica. That victory put them firmly in the mix to qualify for the quarter-finals. However, the damage was done yesterday. They got hammered by Northern Ireland by 20 points to 6. And that meant that in their remaining match against South Africa, it didn't matter what they did, they would not be qualifying for those quarterfinals. So in the dead rubber today against South Africa, in the scorching heat, it has to be said, apart from a brief shower at about midday, and even then the sun was still beating down. Uh, table toppers South Africa won by 19 points to 13 against the Isle of Man. A valiant effort from Clive and Mark. And I have to say, the atmosphere at the the bowling club was electric at times. Uh, often thought of as a sport for the elderly and, and not many young people go along. I have to say I saw a lot of children there and a lot of people in their early 20s to 30s and they really did have a festival vibe I have to say in the atmosphere at the bowling club uh, but it does mean that the Isle of Man pairing of Clive and Mark McGreal are out of the 2018 Commonwealth Games when it comes to the men's pairs. They finish with a record of one victory and three defeats but it's not the end for Clive McGreal. He still has work to do. He's contesting in the men's singles and as we do with every other sport that the Isle of Man are contesting in here at the Commonwealth Games, we'll bring you all the updates, scores and developments as we get them throughout the rest of the tournament. Thanks, Chris. And after the short break, we're going to be talking cycling. Coverage of the 2018 Commonwealth Games. Brought to you by Manx Radio and Manx Telecom. And welcome back. It's 23 minutes past eight in the morning if you're listening in the Isle of Man. It's 23 minutes past five here on Australia's Gold Coast where we are bringing you today at the Games covering all the aspects from uh, the Manx athletes' perspective of the 2018 Commonwealth Games. Uh, and I'm currently here at the Coomera Indoor Sports Centre where Nicole Burns, the only gymnast in Team Isle of Man of the 32 athletes representing our island here in Australia, is competing in the women's all around final uh, and she's currently in 12th place after rotation one with a score of 10.9 so we'll bring you the updates as we get them but all the best to her uh, a festival vibe at the bowls that I, you heard, may have heard me say earlier and it's just as good here uh, indoors here at the, uh, the gymnastics uh, you may be able to hear the roar of the crowd and the tannoy behind me uh, but yes Nicole Burns currently in 12th position with a score of 10.9 and now when we left you uh, yesterday, at the top of uh, yesterday's program, we brought you some news uh, of a new personal best for one of our Manx cyclists. And I'll hand you over to Joe to tell you more. Yes, we did, uh, Chris. We mentioned Draper's personal best success yesterday on the show. And uh, here is the man himself talking to his physio, Wendy Shalcross, to just tell you a little bit more about how he got on. Okay, Matt, you're cooling down. How was that? That was... That was amazing, like, nine second PBs isn't something that, that I expected to get, so, so to, come away with, to come away with that is, is amazing, and, you know, I've got like four to go, I feel the legs are really deadly, and I can feel myself burning up because it was so hot, I just thought, I've just got to push through it, just got to keep going, and, um, yeah, saw the time on the screen and just, I was like, I couldn't believe it. I thought I got it wrong. What was the atmosphere like in the crowd? Oh, it's amazing. Like, there were mountains in the back straight. Mum and Dad were up shouting by the start finish line. There were mountains in the home straight on the finish line, so I'd shout all the way around. Oh, 
and you got like three and a half, four thousand people, and you didn't get that anywhere else. You didn't get that anywhere. So yeah, that was um, that was incredible. How do you feel now that you've represented the Iron Man at Commonwealth Games? Was well, it's, it's, it's a dream come true? Like to pull the Alan Skinson, especially at this level, is something that you don't you know you don't get that opportunity rarely you ever. So to be able to do it, and to be able to do it at 19. So, yeah, it's amazing. Hopefully, hopefully, I've got a few more of these to come as well. Well done, Matt. Thank you. Do you know, I didn't even ask him to do that. It was absolutely superb. Uh, Matthew Draper um, sat on the side of the track um, being interviewed by his physiotherapist. So fair play to Matthew Draper. He's getting a little bit of a nickname for himself, being the sunglass man, because he has been seen with his headphones on, getting into focus, uh, wearing his sunnies inside. But you know what? Whatever he's doing is doing a great job because news has just come in that both Matthew Bostock and Matthew Draper, bearing in mind it is Matthew Bostock's first time out at the Commonwealth Games, Games. They have both just qualified in the men's 15 kilometer scratch race at the Valley, and they are going through to the final, and that is going to be tonight. Aussie time, 9.47 in the UK time, back with you at 7 this afternoon. You should be able to watch that on BBC Sport. I did catch up with team manager Hatcher just now, and he told me that it was a great um, this afternoon. It was just simply a case of qualifying. It's going to be a tough in the finals, he's selling Cameron Mayers, who has to be the favourite. Also, the other cyclists, uh, just to bring you up to date with what they're getting up to, they are out, of course, training each day. And uh, today they've gone out with Andrew Roach, um, who is a team coach, and they've gone out to a lovely area where there apparently is a waterfall, dam, reservoir, I don't know, some water feature, because they're going to do some videoing for me out there. I've sent them on a task, so I'm looking forward to getting some video content from the cyclists and also uh, Roachy out and about on their their travels and no doubt a coffee for these cyclists they like their coffee so i'm going to be bringing you an update on um, on the facebook page because don't forget louisa and i are filming daily updates from manx radio's facebook and also the manx radio portal making sure when you wake up it's the first place that you go to on social media so that is daily updates they're going to be on manx radio's facebook page first thing when you wake up in the morning and we're going to be also posting one um, for later on in the day too so make sure that you do keep catching up with all our social media that's facebook twitter and manx radio portal Back to you, Chris, because I think we're talking more swimming. Oh, well, we will do in a second. Thank you, Joe. But Nicole Burns is back out for rotation two uh, of her gymnastics final, where she's uh, currently competing and doing her routine on the balance beam. And I can see several Manx flags in the audience behind her. But after rotation one, she currently sits uh, in 12th place with a score of 10.9 to it remains to be seen uh, where she will lie in the standings after the balance beam but all seems to be going well it looks like a fantastic routine so far uh, let's hope the judges think so also uh, but let's look ahead to tonight because uh, it's a good job Charlotte Atkinson was in good spirits uh, yesterday 100 meter butterfly final uh, she knew uh, that that was not her strongest event she said it's not even my main event but she still managed to break the island record for the second time in as many days uh, with a, uh, a time of 57.88 seconds she was just three tenths of a second shy of winning a medal and if you can hear behind me the roar of the crowd as Nicole Burns finishes her routine on the balance beam and she looks pretty pleased with that. High fives with her team. She's speaking with her coach, Gennady, and a smile for the camera. Uh, just waiting to see if her score comes up. It's not just yet, but uh, she looks pretty happy with that routine. So we'll hopefully uh, she will uh, be higher up in the standings. 12th she was. Uh, I think that's all really we have time for in today at the Games today. Action packed as you can imagine but the swimming tonight uh, Charlotte Atkinson is in her second semi-final of the Games in the women's 50 metre butterfly and hopefully she can get her second final appearance after last night in the 100 metres fly but I think I'm going to hand back to you in the Isle of Man with Chris Williams as he brings you Carnaby Street after the 8.30 headlines. Yeah.